this is not going to be the most fun video. Recently, we've been having more discussions in the media about the causes of radicalization. Currently, radicalization is being blamed on algorithms, especially when it comes to politics and extremist ideologies. In fact, the biggest example you've probably seen recently is the YouTube algorithm and how it is radicalizing people towards alt-right extremist beliefs. Now, when I saw these claims, I had two main questions. One, are algorithms actually radicalizing us? And two, if they are, what can I do to stop it? In this video, I'm gonna to try to answer both of those questions. As a quick disclaimer, I'm going to be using the term algorithm instead of AI to discuss the algorithms in this video. This is because I don't actually know if all of the algorithms being discussed here are AI. I think that it would be reasonable to assume that a lot of them are, but I don't know that for sure. Additionally, all of the sources are in the description as usual. Let's tackle the first question. Are algorithms actually radicalizing anyone? The research behind this is a bit murky as you would have to do a pretty large study with a lot of people in order to get conclusive results. And it would be really hard to control all of the other factors in those people's lives that might be contributing to their beliefs. However, there have been a couple studies that focus on whether specific algorithms are contributing to radicalization. The most popular algorithm in these studies is the YouTube algorithm. In their paper, Auditing Radicalization Pathways on YouTube, researchers looked into channels that can be categorized as either neutral, intellectual dark web channels, the alt-light, or the alt-right. Their goal was to figure out whether watching videos in any of these categories pushed you towards a specific kind of content. In this case, whether they pushed you further right. What they found was that users who watched milder right videos were consistently pushed towards more extremist alt-right content. For example, a user that started off by watching something on the intellectual dark web, something like a Joe Rogan video, would be then recommended videos that were more and more extreme or more and more alt-right until it hit extremist content. However, users who started on neutral channels would stay there. Their recommendations didn't seem to push them in any particular direction. Other research has shown similar findings for users who dip their toe into contrarian content. Not necessarily things that are extremist, but things that represent points of views that may not be held by the mainstream public. Anecdotally, I've heard from many friends who were interested in learning more about the alt-right over the last several years that doing so caused their YouTube recommendations to be stuck in the alt-right for months, even if they only watched one or two videos. But what about other algorithms that aren't YouTube? Well, there isn't actually that much research that shows that they have an impact anywhere near the level of the YouTube algorithm, especially when it comes to political ideology. Many studies have highlighted the fact that social media and more broadly internet forums have resulted in intellectual silos where we only talk to people who agree with our own beliefs. This causes our beliefs to remain unchallenged and can often pull us deeper into certain belief silos that may lead towards extremist beliefs or extremist content. And that's not an algorithmic problem, that's just the nature of the internet. It's almost certainly contributed to the political divide in the US more than things like how Facebook sources your newsfeed. At the same time, you could argue that algorithms have radicalized us in other ways, especially when it comes to things like body image. For example, Instagram bombards you with images of beautiful people that might lead you to start a fad diet that you wouldn't have otherwise done and that may not be good for your health. However, you could argue that was a thing that was happening well before the internet became a thing. Getting back to the original question, are algorithms radicalizing us? From my research, it seems like the answer is yes in some cases, but no in most cases. In fact, in many cases, it's the fact that the internet allows us to find very niche communities of people with very like-minded beliefs that might pull us deeper and deeper into content that we wouldn't have otherwise found, especially if we're vulnerable. On that note, I also don't want to make it sound like we're completely incapable of escaping these algorithms and the radicalization. In fact, the New York Times article that blew up over YouTube radicalization, where a young man was radicalized by watching increasingly alt-right content that was recommended to him, actually had a happy ending where he became de-radicalized after watching arguments from other YouTubers about that alt-right content. However, this doesn't mean that we don't need to be aware of how algorithms influence our thinking, which gets us to the next question. If algorithms are radicalizing us, 
what can we do to stop it? So there's a couple of technological things that you can do to combat this issue, like sorting your newsfeed chronologically instead of by whatever the algorithm recommends for you, or using platforms that track your data in incognito mode. But the biggest thing you can do is educate yourself on the sources of your information and their biases. And I know that sounds like something that your high school civics teacher would say, but it really is the best way to combat this. In fact, it's easier than it used to be. A lot of social media platforms have incorporated article fact-checking into any post that includes a link to an outside source. While that fact-checking definitely isn't perfect, it's a good start to get more information on where your content is coming from. You can also follow people on social media that you might not agree with to get the opposing viewpoint. However, the thing that I've found to be most helpful is talking to actual people who disagree with you in real life. I know, I know, I'm also one of those people who hates making phone calls to people that aren't my parents, but it does help. I'm also not saying that you should jump into violent or potentially dangerous situations just to learn about the opposing viewpoint. Your personal safety is way more important. But some of my biggest learning experiences have come from discussions with people that I disagree with. If you haven't already guessed, I consider myself to be liberal, but for a little while in high school, I lived in a rural conservative area. While I can't say that any of my core beliefs were swayed by the discussions that I had there, I can say that I developed a lot more compassion and understanding of the opposing argument to many of them. In fact, it's influenced the way that I approach things like science communication and political advocacy. Anyway, I digress, but barring something like social media platforms updating their algorithms to remove all biases directing you towards specific kinds of content, it's on you to do the legwork to make sure that you know where your information's coming from. That's what I've got for y'all today. If you like this video, you should actually check out Smarter Every Day's series on this topic. It's really, really great. He talks to people at a bunch of different social media companies about these algorithms and how they work. I'd also recommend that you smash that like button and subscribe to my channel so that I know that you like this video. You can also support me on Patreon, where I do monthly Q&A live streams, as well as fortnightly blogs. Thank you so much to all my current patrons. Otherwise, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.